Good afternoon to you. Mark Suttoth, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your hurricane outlook and discussion for Friday, the 27th of October, 2017. Looking at the tropics this afternoon, red X in the Western Caribbean, what does that mean? Well, Invest Area 93L uh, has a couple of big paragraphs written about it, that's for sure. Now up to 80% chance of development into either a depression or a tropical storm. If it becomes a tropical storm, the name would be Philippe. And uh, the recon plane, the hurricane hunters are heading out there now, and they will give us more information. So maybe by 5 p.m. Eastern, this will be a tropical depression or possibly even a tropical storm. And the National Hurricane Center indicating here that it is likely that this will develop further. Uh, and that being the case, tropical storm watches or warnings may be needed for the Cayman Islands, central and western Cuba, and the central and northwestern Bahamas. Interest in the Florida Keys and South Florida should also monitor the progress of this disturbance. This is where it's located now. This is what it looks like in the five-day development area. And as you can see, let's just single out this image here. The motion is expected to be off towards the north and northeast with time, probably something like this, because a very strong and deep trough is going to be coming and turning this out However, it could still easily bring some squally weather and uh, rough seas to portions of South Florida, the Florida Keys, but direct impacts in terms of this passing right over that area, I just don't think that's going to happen because of this trough moving through. And I'm going to tell you, too, if it wasn't for Selma, I think that's the name of it, in the southeastern Pacific, which let's just go look at that real quick because that's also an area of interest. And if this wasn't there... Yeah, it is Selma. Um, I think that 93L would probably be already a tropical storm and maybe a strong one at that. I talked about that yesterday. The two of these systems, with 93L being up here, Selma over here, there's only so much energy that's available in this area, and they kind of compete for it, and so they both stay rather weak. But they both have a lot of rainfall, and that can be a problem. And as we look with the track of Selma here, Forecast to make landfall in Central America uh, sometime tomorrow evening, and that will bring heavy rain into El Salvador and Guatemala, and then that will dissipate very, very quickly. Looking at the cloud animation here of 93L, very disorganized overall, which you would expect as we head towards the last part of the hurricane season here. Uh, lots and lots of dry air to the north, but the deep tropical moisture and the latent heat still resides down here in the Caribbean and the extreme southeastern Pacific. Therefore, there's enough energy for something like this to develop. You have the Cayman Islands here. Here's Jamaica. Probably not much rainfall in Jamaica, but the Caymans, and again, western and central Cuba, and the northwest and central Bahamas could be in line for tropical storm conditions. We will take a look at the GFS output and what it's showing for this in just a moment. The upper-level winds are very unfavorable just to the north of where this is. You can see all this red through here, and then that's very prevalent all the way up into the southern United States, as you would expect this time of year. That's why this part of the hurricane season is typically not very busy, but there's just a little cocoon of safety, if you will, right here, and just on the north coast of Honduras, and then the adjacent waters where the atmosphere is just calm enough, and the winds are not screaming across the top of it, cutting those tops off, that this is trying to organize. And I think what's going to happen, and I'll show you here in a minute, with the GFS upper-level wind forecast, is that this will move kind of with the flow, and instead of being just sheared apart, as it moves with that flow, the relative shear isn't quite as strong. So let's take a look at what I mean by that. And let me get your uh, bearing set. The system is located right down here where upper level winds are anticyclonic and generally light. And uh, so they're not strong and not blowing across the top of the system. So if I put this into motion, uh, this is at 200 millibars in the atmosphere, so that's pretty high up. You notice a couple of things, uh, and you don't see the system in this part of the atmosphere, which is good. That means the circulation doesn't reach up to the 200 millibar level, that would be an intense hurricane for sure, but you can just guesstimate that it's going to be somewhere along this path 
over the next few days as this animation runs. I think it's 72 hours long. And you see what happens. These wind barbs all start to move southwest to northeast with time. At the beginning of the loop, they are all west to east. Towards the end of the loop, you see how they start to veer, and then they all start to head off more southwest to northeast. Well, guess what else is going to be doing that? the system, whatever it is, uh, depression or storm. And so some of these wind flags in here, these barbs, 30, 40 knots or so, yeah, that's very strong upper level wind flow. But if the system is moving at 10 or 15 knots, then it's just like if you're driving down the highway in 80 mile per hour wind at 50 miles per hour, the relative wind speed, if it's blowing right, you know, a tailwind, uh, is only 30 miles per hour. Does that make sense? It's the same reason why jets, when they get into the jet stream, have less fuel expended and their trips are faster versus uh, commercial aircraft that fly against the jet stream. And while it's not exactly helpful for this tropical system to be embedded into this uh, southwesterly flow, it's pretty strong, it's not hurting it that it's moving with the flow as much. Does that make sense? So this might develop a little bit more than we were anticipating yesterday, at least me. Uh, and so maybe through this region right here, tropical storm conditions, 40, 50 mile per hour winds, squally weather, that kind of thing wouldn't be out of the question. And even in the lower keys uh, in parts of South Florida, extreme South Florida, some squally weather. But I think this is going to be mostly an easterly to southeasterly weighted system, meaning that most of the weather is going to be away from uh, South Florida, kind of like this, with the system and the low pressure area kind of right in the middle like that, and the worst of the weather over here, instead of well-formed like a symmetric hurricane would be. And I know I'm getting into a lot of detail here, but people want to know the weekend's coming up. There's a lot of things happening in South Florida, as you would imagine, any weekend, right? and people are, gonna, are going to want to kind of figure out what's going to happen with this. So let's look at the operational GFS here. This is the North American shot. I usually don't use this particular domain of maps, but for today's purposes, I had to switch so that I could show you some very interesting things that are going to be happening. First, let me just get your bearings. This would be the northeast part of the United States. There's Cape Cod through Cape Hatteras down towards Florida here around the Gulf Coast, the Bay of Campeche, Campeche, whichever you prefer. There's Cuba, and there's the Bahamas through there. So everybody know what we're looking at? Good. So this is the initial map. Let me put this into motion, and we can show you what's happening. Uh, this goes out, I think, for four days. There's our tropical system getting better organized, the low-pressure area better defined through the straits of Florida, dipping down to about 991, 992 millibars through the Bahamas here, and then maybe a pretty close brush to Bermuda, which is right there, and this loop will run a couple of times as we analyze things. So you see it coming out of the Caribbean, getting better organized through tonight, through tomorrow, and some of these greens in here indicating some fairly heavy rainfall, maybe even as far north as West Palm Beach and the Vero Beach area, and then the front comes through and like a big broom kind of pinwheels and sweeps everything out. But... Some of this energy, not the full entrainment of the tropical system itself, but some of this energy will get pulled into this front and attendant upper level energy, you can see that right there, and that will pinwheel into New England. But the tropical system is over here. So they are separate but related, if that makes sense. Very, very deep moisture feed coming out of the Caribbean into this potent storm system. We're looking at the surface here and the precip. In the upper levels of the atmosphere, there is a lot of energy. And so that will tap some of this moisture and entrain it in, creating one heck of a storm for New England, while whatever happens with this tropical system passes near Bermuda and on out into the Atlantic. So a complicated, rather interesting setup, not too disruptive overall, compared to what we saw with the siege of hurricanes back in September and at the end of August. This is tame compared to that. However, this certainly has an impact to it. So be aware. Uh, and again, just real quick, when watches and warnings go up, 
if there are any watches and warnings for the Florida Keys and elsewhere in the United States, which would basically just be the Florida Keys, I would imagine, we would have hurricane local statements, so be out on the lookout for those. If there are no watches and warnings per se for the potential of this becoming a storm, then at least check the local weather service forecast for any watches, warnings, and advisories not related directly to the tropical system, but this is more of your hazardous weather outlook, and this will tell you about what to expect because of the system out there. It gets complicated because not everything fits neatly into one package. The weather is always changeable. If it's not a named storm or it's not directly impacting the area and there are no watches and warnings, then the hurricane local statements won't be issued, and so you need to take it upon yourself to put in your zip code or your location Key West, Marathon, Miami, whatever, and then you can read the forecast discussion or the local information. You can also just click on the map like I just showed you a moment ago. Click on an area of interest. We'll just do Homestead, Florida. As an example, you get the forecast for the area over the next few days, and then right there, your hazardous weather outlook and your hydrologic outlook, which talks about rainfall that's anticipated for the area. So that's how you can figure out what might happen locally. All right, so we'll keep an eye on this. Not a real big problem, but in the wake of Irma, this kind of stuff gets to be annoying, and it's going to probably wash out the weekend, or at least part of it, Saturday anyway, for some areas of the Keys in South Florida. Um, but beyond that, you know, a, so I don't want to call it a significant tropical storm, but, you know, heavy rain and squalls and 40, 50, maybe 60 mile per hour winds, you never know with these things, uh, for parts of Cuba, the Caymans maybe, and the Bahamas. So we have a lot to talk about. And then, of course, the big storm system that kind of evolves from this uh, for New England. So there's a lot to keep up with over the weekend. And then after that, nice weather shall return, I promise, at least for the east. All right, that's it for me for this afternoon and the rest of the day. I appreciate you, as always, tuning in to see what I've got to say. I am Mark Suttoth for HurricaneTrack.com, and I'll have another update for you tomorrow morning.